Good morning, Junior Rangers, and welcome back to Crystal Coast State Park. I'm park naturalist Winter, and this week we've been focusing on the tide pool. So what better way to learn about the tide pools than to actually come down and explore? Now, you might recall there are three things that you need in order to have a tide pool. One is ocean water, the second are rocks, and the third are the living organisms. So let's go and see what we can find. Hey, Junior Rangers, look here. If you look into this pool, you'll notice lots and lots of what look like upside down flowers. Well, these are sea anemones. There are some big ones that are open, and there are some smaller ones that are closed. So when a sea anemone is inside the water, they're open like a big beautiful flower waving their tentacles all around. But then when they're out of the water, they take their tentacles, they close them up, and they make themselves into just a big blob. Really what's happening is when they're out of the water, like these ones here, they cover their bodies with little bits of rock and shell, put their tentacles in so that they blend in. They're trying to protect themselves from two things. One is from predators, the other is from drying out in the sun. But then when they're inside the water, like this beautiful green sea anemone here, they open up their tentacles, they wave them around, they look for little tiny bits of food that get attached to their tentacles, and their little stinging cells called nematosis sting the food, they draw it into the center of their mouths, and they eat. That's a sea anemone. And a sea anemone is a cousin to a jellyfish. So just like jellyfish have those stinging tentacles, so do sea anemones. Hey, Junior Rangers, look inside this pool. Now, it's really important to remember when you're tide pooling that you want to take your time. You want to act like a scientist. If you quickly go from pool to pool to pool, you're going to miss so much. So here, if we peer closely inside this tide pool, believe it or not, we're seeing dozens of different types of animals. I'm seeing lots of those beautiful sea anemones we just learned about, both big ones that are open, waving their tentacles around, as well as little itty bitty sea anemones that you couldn't even know are live animals. We also have mussels. If you can see all of these little black shells, those are baby mussels. And we also have these tiny single-shelled snails that are called limpets. Now limpets have a very strong muscular foot that they use to firmly attach themselves to the rock. So look what happens when I try to actually move this tiny organism. I'm trying with all my might. That little snail, that little limpet is stronger than me. That's one of their adaptations for survival in this very harsh environment. So they have this strong foot that they clamp down or suction down to the rocks. And when they feel threatened or when the tide is washing in and the waves are crashing down on them, they're going to suction down. And then when it's calm again, they'll lift up and they'll start moving around looking for food. Limpets are herbivores, so they feed primarily on algae. So here's some more of these little itty bitty limpets, but here's a larger one. This is called an owl limpet, and this is a really good reminder of why we don't ever want to take anything out of the tide pools, because this animal has other living creatures growing on top of it. So the reason it's called an owl limpet is if we were to turn the animal over, you would be able to see inside the shell. Of course, that's assuming that there's no animal there and you're just looking at a shell. And it's supposed to resemble the face of an owl. I love this pool. Every time I come to the tide pools, I check this pool out because I can almost always be guaranteed I'm going to see fish. Oh, I just saw one darting around. You might notice it has little white spots on it. That's called an opali perch. And that's one of the two species of fish that we always see here at Crystal Cove State Park, the other being tide pool sculpin. But the other thing about this pool is if I'm looking carefully, and I am right now, I'm seeing very little movement of several different species of crabs. I'm seeing both 
striped shore crabs as well as hermit crabs. There's also some snails and I'm also looking at what looks like a tentacle of an octopus but I think it's really only algae. Maybe while you look into this pool you'll also be able to see all the things we're talking about. When you're visiting a tide pool, not only do you want to look into the pools themselves, but you also want to look in between the cracks and crevices. Most animals are invertebrates. In fact, the only animals that we have in the tide pools that have backbones and are vertebrates are the two fish species that you saw. The rest are invertebrates. Well, Junior Rangers, I hope you enjoyed exploring the tide pools with us today. Next time you visit here at Crystal Cove State Park, there are tide pools throughout our three and a half miles of coastline. And I hope you'll come down at a low tide when the water level in the ocean is down far enough that you can peer inside the pools and see all sorts of animals, including the ones we talked about today. Now you wanna remember the really important tide pool rules. And one is you never wanna remove anything from the pools. You wanna just take your time, look inside, and use your eyes and not your hands. You want to walk very carefully on the rocks because if you hear something crunching or you hear something squishing, that means you're stepping on and possibly hurting an animal. Our goal is to be good tide pullers and to help conserve this beautiful ecosystem for future generations. So hope to see you out here next time, Junior Rangers. Bye.